Famous artists can jumpstart your creativity when you look at their style. This painting is done in the style of Miro, a famous artist known for surrealism. And surrealism is simply dreamlike imagery that is very imaginative. So this is a fall leaf with an extra long stem and the body of the leaf is broken up into different colors. So let's see what we need to make our own painting. You'll need some oil pastels some paper of your choice. I'm using large watercolor paper, some watercolors, paint brushes. I used a little salt just for fun. I'm going to show you that idea and some water. You'll also need some scrap paper and a pencil. So to get started, you want to lay out the plan of your painting. And this is just your roadmap for uh, what you're going to do on your real uh, paper. So I've got, we're doing seasons, so I've got spring, summer, fall, and winter. And I made these really imaginative designs in the style of Miro. So let's get started with our base coats of paint. And base coating is just laying out blocks of color. So we're gonna add a little water to our brush. And I'm gonna start with some green. And you can pull the color over on the side. And you're just gonna make some circles. And this is going to go behind our spring section up here. I've got a cl cloud because it rains a lot in the spring. And then you're going to come down to the blue and you can add some more water to your brush. There we go. And you can do another abstract shape. This is going to be our winter section. Winters are cold and blustery, so we're going to give it that tint of blue behind our snowflakes. And you would just fill the shape in. Now, one special technique I want to show you is using large salt crystals to add texture to your, this section of the painting. And we'll just finish filling this in. And once you get it all completely filled in, you're going to sprinkle. There we go. We'll clean up our edges. Sprinkle some salt right on top of the wet paint. And you're going to set that aside to dry. I've got one ready underneath. Here's a little sample of the salt after it's dried on there. So this is without salt. So when I brush this away, it takes a little bit to get off. You can see where all the salt pieces were laying on that affected the pigment underneath. So let's get back to our painting. Now we're gonna use a pencil to lightly draw some shapes. So I wanna put my sun on here. That's gonna be about this big. And we wanna think about composition. There's the center of the sun. And you're gonna lightly draw these elements of your design right on top. And we want, we've got our cloud. Now you're going to add some color with these oil pastels. So to do that, you can circle around and you go right over top your dried wa watercolor section. And then you can add an orange dot and you can put in some black. Miro used a lot of black in his paintings as outlines and just bold points that draw your attention. Okay, so I've got one underneath that I've been working on a lot. Now we're going to do what's called a wash and we're going to put blue paint over the entire drawing, except for up here in this top section, actually. So when we wash over, let's get some water down our paint a little bit more. When we wash over everything, you see how the oil pastel doesn't like the water very much and it's resisting the oil. And you want to get all of your edges. Let's come over to the leaf section. You can use as big a brush as you have. If it gets too dark on the yellow, use a paper towel to blot that away. And you can also fill in your um, other areas. You can color in with actual other colors of watercolor. This is why we use um, watercolor because it'll spread out watercolor paper all over. So the paint will spread out all over the paper. Okay, now, so you would just leave this aside to dry and you would end up with something like this. 
We love our artist inspiration around here at Hands On, so we've got a bonus idea on the website. And this was based off of Surratt, who loved to use polka dots in his imagery.